on your Jump, 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 jump. What we done started Look at what we done started This the people party What's up, party people? It's the BKMC, the MCEO, Talib Kweli. Welcome to another wonderful, fantastic edition of the People's Party with Talib Kweli. Shout out to my homegirl, Jasmine Lee, my lovely, talented co-host in the house. Give it up for Jasmine Lee. Oh, gosh, don't stop with the clapping. <laughs> now, Jasmine, today's episode is very, very special. I'm so excited. Because, you know, we've been here in Los Angeles, and we don't get to interview a lot of people from New York. Mm -hmm. And today we have somebody who is from Brooklyn. An icon in the game. This is like a once in a lifetime type of artist. An artist like this only comes around once in a lifetime. She's a game changer, one of the most revolutionary, paradigm shifting pioneers. And I want to emphasize this a spectacular lyricist. Mm -hmm. She's a boss. She's got a new album out right now. It's called Nine. Simply the Queen Bee, Little Kim is in the house. Like, when you know, when you when you run into your Brooklyn compadre. Right, so it's family. It's Brooklyn night all day, like. All over the world. Yes, I cannot believe, like, this is, we're finally getting right. the vibe. Right, we've been in a lot of the same rooms together, I mentioned, because, yes. especially when I first started my career, I would go to, like, award shows and events, and it was like, everything would stop. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And little Kim is in the building. <laughs> <laughs> The That's how it stopped. The world, the world stopped when Lil' Kim he's, he's walked the in the building. We saw you recently on the uh, BET Awards. Yes. Bringing Junior Mafia back together. Great performance. You know, you got the new album out right now. Nine. Nine. Yes. You know, and thank everybody for like just supporting me because mm -hmm. it's a blessing to be um, iconic status. You know, mm -hmm. if you will, and everyone still just wait for you to mm -hmm. drop and want you to still make more music, more music, mm -hmm. more music. And it's something that's in my heart, so it makes me mm -hmm. happy because that's my happy place when I'm recording and working in the studio and on the road. Right. So it's, it's How crazy. many albums are you at? The crazy thing uh -huh. is, well, you know, I've been in the industry since I was a kid. Uh -huh. Started at 16, wow. right? Yeah, so you would think because of the iconic status, mm -hmm. I would have more than five albums. Mm -hmm. This is only my fifth album. That means she was working hard. And the thing is, I was on the road so much. Like I would be gone for years, mm -hmm. like not just like months, but like years. So I think that contributed to me not being able to put out uh, material as much. And mm -hmm. then of course, when Biggie passed, mm -hmm. I was just lost, like, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. You know, he had a major part in my career, so. Right. And as your course, you started out with Big, and mm -hmm. of course he had a, a huge influence on your writing, but you developed your own niche as a writer. And yeah. um, just on this album, and I, I like a lot of just the writing. Um, I noticed yeah. that the album has a lot of current sounds. Mm -hmm. It's working with current artists mm -hmm. who's cracking right now, Rich the Kid, mm -hmm. um, yep. City Girls, yep. OG Genesis, yep. you know, certain people. Um, that uh, that uh, Booty Everywhere record, what's the name of the record? Found You. Found You. <laughs> Shout out to Bubba Sparks. Yes. Um, but y'all really it. repurposed that in a real way. Like when yeah. I heard that, I was like, oh yeah, it's time for that to come back. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was time, because this is what it's about right mm -hmm. now, everybody from three to 30 is mm -hmm. twerking. Mm -hmm. Right, <laughs> right. Everybody, you know, right. and it's like, why not? You yeah, know, it's fun. It, it is, it, it's a lot of fun. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as much fun as you're having on the record though, it's mm -hmm. like, again, with the bars, like certain bars when you was like, um, uh, it's the principal don't lean on me. Yeah. You know, there's a lot of layers to a bar like See, that. See, you caught that. Yeah. You or, caught that, yeah. or what, you got another one? I got another one, the okay. one, um, the other one where he was like, mm -hmm. um, uh, we we burn we uh we burn bread so let's make a toast. Exactly. Yeah. Can I give you one so you can yeah, see yeah. if you could put it together? Yeah. Okay. Hey Sus, hang around your neck like a noose. Right. Mm. Made a bishop pray for you because you know I got that juice. <laughs> mm. Bishop and juice. Yeah. You know, shout out to Tupac, one of the yeah. iconic roles. But I mean that's there's a lot of layers to that. Yes. Um Greg Thomas is a professor from Syracuse. Mm -hmm. Did a course called accredited course. accredited course accredited course on oh, the lyrics of little kim was called queen bitch lyricism mm -hmm. 101 in syracuse College. <laughs> right wow. you went and spoke to them students right yeah it's a class you can yeah. take a class it's called queen b 101 mm -hmm. 
It's crazy. I need to go get that class just because. <laughs> it's so crazy. And they had never done it before, ever. I was the first artist that they've ever done that with. Mm -hmm. And the school board allowed this mm -hmm. class yeah. to happen. And so I went to Syracuse in honor of that class. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I talked with them. And it's it's really, it's a literacy class. Mm -hmm. So you learn a lot. You would think, oh, okay, this is just, mm -hmm. you know, plain, you know, extracurriculum class. No, it's a credited course. Mm -hmm. And you actually learn a lot. And um, I was the first person that did it for it. And the only other people that they did it for afterwards was Biggie and Tupac. Wow. wow. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, now, with this album, it's called Nine. Yeah. Uh, I heard you say that God revealed that Nine should be the name of the album? Yep. Okay, he sure break did. that down. Okay, so I'm a very spiritually mm -hmm. connected person, and I don't do anything unless I feel it, mm -hmm. and I'm spiritually connected to it. So, um, for a long time, I was having a hard time trying to figure out what I was going to name my album, right? So, mm -hmm. I was on my phone doing something, and numbers started popping up into my head and seven is actually my favorite number okay and i was like damn seven is really my favorite number but then i didn't i'm called seven with styles p shout out to the ghost yes the yeah. ghost <laughs> and so i when he when i said that i heard god say like yeah but nine mm -hmm. is your favored number mm -hmm. so it hit me like oh shoot that's, that's the name of the album mm. that's the name of the album because it's time because my album is supposed to come out last year mm -hmm. and it kept getting pushed back kept getting pushed mm -hmm. back and i'm like god what is this like i'm ready to get this creativity out because mm -hmm. this is not this that's just some of the music i've done a long time ago right you're you know sitting I mean? on it i was sitting on it's it. new to us but it feels it's new to you, to you. right it right. feels old to me so i'm like i'm past this like i got you know i gotta mm -hmm. get it out and so my baby was born, my daughter, mm. Royal, Royal Rain. Rain. She was born. Beautiful name. Thank you. Names are so important. It is so important. Yeah, I was. my parents named me Talib Kweli, and they blessed me with the name from yes. birth. But most of us out here got to choose names. Mm. Yeah, yeah, we have to choose. And, mm. you know, her father and I, we both came up with the name mm -hmm. together. But um, she was born June 9th. Mm -hmm. Biggie passed on March 9th. Mm. Nine members in Junior Mafia. Mm -hmm. Oh. And it's 2019. Nine is just a spiritual awakening number for me. Jay Z is. Um, I I have a theory, and you you might know better than I I do, but I have a theory that Jay Z is secretly a five percenter <laughs> <laughs> because of his lyrics. He drops. Secretly? Yeah, he be dropping. He be dropping little hits hits and bars throughout his career. He dropped a lot of shit. And he talks like a five percenter. He does you know? like a, yeah, like, a, but a know? Brooklyn era, you know, five percenter. Mm -hmm. um, Jay Z in his book um, talks about how. He has all these, you know, he's because he's a billionaire and he's a fashion icon. He's mm -hmm. become so much bigger than how he started. Mm -hmm. But it all started with those lyrics and that that pen. Mm -hmm. And I bring up five percent because it's interesting. You said seven because seven is very very uh, important in um, five percent. Yeah. The uh, supreme mathematics. Yep. Um, that's the divine number. Yeah. Nine is yeah. is is born. Yeah. Right. And and yeah. you get to nine as the completion. So nine is very important just for like. New York 5% street culture, yeah. the number nine is very important. Very. And then in numerology, um, nine represents wisdom and responsibility. And See? People there serve you go. humanity. You know what I'm saying? That's my favorite number, too. <laughs> I was born in September, well, 9th September, and then 29th for my birthday. So oh, twice. See. We best friends. Oh, oh, say it again. Say it again. <laughs> we all best friends. You my best friends. No <laughs> doubt. Now, yeah. we have that Brooklyn connection, right? Yeah. Um, you know, there's there's like there's Brooklyn things that are just so iconic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the, seeing the seeing the the Brooklyn Public Library and Special Ed video, <gasps> uh, partying at 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 Empire Roller Rink. Yes. Going to Kings Plaza on a dollar. That man. was my thing. The roller rink. Yeah. Somebody should do Empire? a movie about that. Oh man. I went down. Crazy. What went down at Empire Roller? It was Roller? a lot that went down. Yeah. And all the celebrities <laughs> would come there, and right. some of them may make it out the that's way they right. wanted to make it out. Oh, but wow. That's it right. Was, it was, but that's, it was. That's when roller skating was hard. Yes. <laughs> I mean, it, it still is, kind of. Yeah. Like, hood niggas go roller skating. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, nah, that. it's not hard no more. Like, that, it, like then you don't know if you was going to get shot while you was roller skating <laughs> or anything. <laughs> right. It's different now. Like, now you know. But I guess it depends on where you go, too. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, gentrification yeah. changes the, the yeah. makes it more safer. But gentrification is yeah. always a cycle. It's like the white people move in, <laughs> then they move out, and the black people or yeah. poor people move back in, and it's a cycle. But yeah. you went to uh, Sarah J. Hale. I went to Brooklyn Tech. Ah, you remember right? that? Yes, because those those schools are close and not in the same neighborhood, but right. No, like, they're real close. There's a there's a 
there's a, a intersection of yeah. people. This is what I remember from Brooklyn Tech is I was the king of hooky parties. <laughs> <laughs> he must have been mine. I must have. I, that's what I was thinking. Like, we probably had to go to the same hooky party. We had to. At I some used, point. I used to have them in my house. Me too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I used to go to hooky parties in Best Stuy. Shout out to my man Merv. Shout out to, you know, like dudes back in the days, Seth and, and Derek from Crown Heights. Like, I used to smoke weed, drink 40s, and, and make steak em sandwiches. Steak em. Ah! Steak em, yes. <laughs> you gotta be from Brooklyn, though. Know. That you can't have a hooky party those, without those, the steak. Those and thin sandwich. sliced. My grandmother Javodi, who I named my label after, she used to make me steak and sandwiches. Yeah, man. Back in the day. My mom used to be so cheap with the steak and she would only allow us to use two slices. It's like, yeah. Mom, no one was a thin ass sandwich. That wow. was that was it. Steak em is terrible. Terrible. I'm sure. We but it wasn't then. Um, but so yeah, so I that's what I had to know. I had to know if you went to hooky parties because that was oh, like yes. school was a was it that was a rite of passage. Like that yeah. was that was our school. It was an art too. Yeah, <laughs> I used to I used to go to Brooklyn. I used to check in to the homeroom. Tech had I don't know how many students Sarah Hale had, but Tech had five thousand students back then. Yeah, I don't remember, but what I do remember is we would actually go to school to cut school. Yeah, oh, yeah. check in the homeroom. <laughs> I would check in. I would sit in the back. And I would sneak out like, yep. oh, yeah, yeah, I'd be back, and I'll go to McDonald's downtown Brooklyn. Oh, I would meet in places with the pizza parlor. Okay, yeah, yeah, it was the pizza parlor. We all round up, and then we was out from there. Did y'all ever get caught? Was there a time where your parents popped up and you were like, oh, all what the am time I doing? Yeah, happened. they used to remember they used to send a note to your parents. Yeah, and you used to get home in time to get the note. Uh, yeah, the Brooklyn Tech had little yellow slips they would send to your parents. I would make sure I got home and get the slip. I cut six months of school before my parents even knew. Wow, Look, I, I just wasn't going. Let me. Let me let me tell you, right, so my father was like really strict, so mm -hmm. he used to drive the bus and stuff. So mm -hmm. one time he caught us, you know, playing hooky from school, mm -hmm. whatever. And the we have, reason why he caught us mm -hmm. is because he looked at the phone bill. Okay. And he saw that I was on the All phone. The and like, yeah, oh. he was Sherlock Homeboy. <laughs> yes. It was like 11 something in the, in the morning, and I'm supposed to be in school. Right. Wow. And so he took the phone mm -hmm. out of the wall and would take it with him to work. Are you serious? Yes. So one time he called That's us. OG OD. OG oh OD. <laughs> right. And he took it to work. Mm -hmm. And so he caught us one mm -hmm. time, right? And he was like, what are you? I said, no, I was sick. They sent me home from school. Yep. He said, no one contacted me. I said, you took the phone. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Got him. Got him. <laughs> Listen, I got caught too. I remember I was, uh, I was a technically skipping, but I was skipping, whatever. And so I went to McDonald's, and my father was standing at the door of McDonald's, just leaned up as I walked in all happy for my double cheeseburger, and he's like, yeah, get your ass back in the car. <laughs> I was like, done. Wow. He was caught. He was ahead of the game. He was oh, caught. He was. Now, what is it about Brooklyn? That makes me so happy. <laughs> That's a good question. But to, to take that even further, what is it, what's in the water that makes us such great MCs, from Kane to Jay and Big, Most Def, Buckshot, MC Light. Yeah, it, it's the Karis one born in Brooklyn. Let me tell you, the swag is just unmatched. Mm -hmm. It's unmatched, it's different. Mm -hmm. We just different, we dress different, we move different. Mm -hmm. And I can't really explain it except that we were meant to be there. Mm. Whoever was born in Brooklyn, it's almost like, well, it was we were cemented mm -hmm. and God already knew who he was placing there because it's just a certain way we talk and a certain way we move and you know unfortunately we could be dead broke but we're gonna be fly listen that's right, <laughs> that's right. for real that's how Brooklyn moves that's right and we be flying know. some camouflage army gear and some Timberlands and come out the crib and go to the club and that yeah, shit. Yeah. Like, nigga, I'm going to the club right. and this, for, I'm going for war and I'm still the flyest nigga in the club. Yeah, because it was about presentation for Brooklyn. Yeah. Presentation. Um, Your first breakthrough was through, if we all can agree, if he's not the best, it's like in your top three um, big. What was like your early meeting friendship? Did you with say if he's not Listen, the he's man. my favorite. <laughs> I'm just being politically correct for everyone. Like, he's the, the this best. It's the people's party. I, we don't play politics here. Okay, he is the best. Let's just say that. You came up from under one of the best. I'm about to call ghosts on you, right? Hello? <laughs> <laughs> no. Ghosts, I need something to take care of. Oh, no. <laughs> so how was like your early meetings, like, uh, when, like early hanging out with him? How was that? Before Big even became big, we were on the train going to his sh shows. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We'd be on the train, the train eating White Castle burgers. Yes, White Castle. You know, and just you know, vibing. 
I never missed a show that he did, like mm. park shows, you know. It's like we were like kids just going to block parties, mm -hmm. but we were going to block parties because Big had a show. Of course, he was always like rapping on the block and mm -hmm. crib and stuff, but he is just a genius. Absolutely. Super genius. I met Big at um, the country club. Oh wow! With Tupac. Yeah. Oh, the country yeah, club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know where. Do you remember um, Little Sean? Absolutely, he used a to homie. perform at the country. That's club. the homie. Oh, he's the homie. I'm Little Sean is on my mixtapes. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, oh, he was. Yeah. he was like. Sean he was is fly. Sean All the girls is, loved him. Oh yeah, Little Sean. Uh, uh, Hickey's on my neck. Yeah. <laughs> No, Sean got bars to this day. Like if you, like to Sean, this day. to this day, like Sean, so Sean he's, he's he's doing he's a he's a he does a uh, training, right? Like and he, oh, he, that's dope. Yeah, he'll he'll work you out and then give you them them, them bars. Yeah, oh. you know what I'm saying? Oh, he wasn't no joke too. I mean, like I remember before he went away to jail, mm -hmm. whatever. He had the town like on fire, on fire, yeah. shook, and then. Yeah. But it's good to see like those guys that was super, super street, mm -hmm. they understood the music industry and the game mm -hmm. so well. Like, they was people we looked up to all mm -hmm. the time. Sean Penn, that's what he's calling himself. Now. Sean Penn. <laughs> Sean Penn. What was some of the um, best advice that Biggie gave you? Mm. Don't ever dig in your nose because somebody's watching. <laughs> <laughs> Facts, they always right. see you. <laughs> he did. He used to always say. <laughs> Big is... <laughs> Big is Funny. I'll never forget. This is this is funny. So we're go this is like one of our first shows, mm -hmm. and we were like rushing because it was like a last minute thing. We had to mm -hmm. get to the airport, and he got there. I was somewhere else, mm -hmm. so I had to meet them there. And when I got there, I was like a mess. I had on like my Reeboks and blah blah blah. And he was like, "Babe, listen." <laughs> <laughs> You a superstar now. Mm -hmm. You can't come through the airport like this. You look like one of my old hoes. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. I was like, okay, all right. Now they got to wait for me to get fly to come to the right. airport. Right. <laughs> right, you on stage at all times. Yeah. yeah, then he couldn't make up his mind because then when I come to the airport, they said, hey, you have to put all this on to come to the airport. I was like... Right. Well, you said. <laughs> then y'all going to security is taking extra going time. Right. <laughs> Listen, you gotta look good, and it's it's always better to be around people that's gonna keep it real with you anyway than it's yeah. gonna sugarcoat things and then you. Don't no, yeah, elevate. he was he was too real, like <laughs> way too real. Now, but he was also like the best. Now we celebrating um Diddy's birthday. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? He's fifty. Now. Yes, he's the Godfather. He they should, people should just really label him that. The like, Godfather. Let him be the Godfather. Let him be yeah, black. I agree. Black of uh, Frank Sinatra. He could be that too. Yeah, like he, he used to say that when he when 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 Bad Boy started really really running running the game, mm -hmm. like you know, I remember he did an interview with Vibe, I think, where he said, "I'm I'm the black Frank Sinatra." Like he took ownership of that shit. And right. then when you see Get Him to the Greek, and he's with a uh, uh, Russell Brand, and they're like, "Y'all like the Rat Pack?" He's like, "You're." He said, "He said he said I'm Frank." He said, "No, you're Sammy." He said, "Why I gotta be Sammy? Because I'm black." Yeah. <laughs> nah, nigga, I'm Frank. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. <laughs> I mean, but Frank Sinatra is sort of like the Godfather. That's like, right. If you, he he carries himself like he's like Godfather. I think Puffy should really have that name because, mm -hmm. I mean, we credit him in our way, but he he he, he deserves a little bit more credit. Mm -hmm. What was his first? Imp what was the first impression that you had when you met him? It had to be. Like a hurricane. I was mesmerized when okay. I met. I was because I was little, little right. girl, and I was just like because I was the biggest Jodeci fan, the biggest mm -hmm. Mary J. Blige fan, mm -hmm. and I actually the first time I met him, Biggie brought me to the studio mm -hmm. before either one of us really was popping, and Jodeci was actually in the studio. He was wow. working on something. Yeah, they mm -hmm. and I was just like. Fangirling out. Fangirling. <laughs> mm -hmm. So just young and dumb, just like. And I was so excited, but I was really cool because I'm mm -hmm. from Brooklyn, so you know you can't. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, so you just like, I'm just looking, mm -hmm. but I was very like, wow, because to me, he was always this mogul before he even became mm -hmm. the mogul to me because I always saw genius in Puffy. Mm -hmm. I always saw he knew exactly what he wanted to do. Mm -hmm. And to me, him, R. Kelly, and... Uh, Mr. Biggs, their videos were mm -hmm. so vision, like mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can see everything mm -hmm. as a movie when they did it. Mm -hmm. And that 
vision that they had when they were doing their videos, to me, you have to have some type of level of genius to mm -hmm. think that way mm -hmm. in an industry where people weren't like they didn't they, they just changed the game so right. a whole another level right right yeah, it's like many movies you look many forward movies. to seeing what you're was part of that out. legacy yeah. though like yeah you're part of that era. I, I am and I'm blessed yeah. mm -hmm. and I'm so happy and I learned so much from mm -hmm. Diddy and I feel like mm -hmm. I'm going to that space where he was absolutely now because isn't that the point. That is the goal. Yeah. That's the goal. It's like when I watched Hip Hop Evolution with uh, you and C's on it and talk about Junior Mafia, mm -hmm. what struck me the most was was when uh, when when Diddy was on it talking about uh, Biggie showed up with his own label like, nah, I'm doing this Junior Mafia thing. Yeah. And he was like, oh, you're trying to be me. He's like, you know, oh, that's exactly what I'm trying to do. Right. Isn't right? that the goal? It, it was very... um. It was very heartwarming for me, being a Brooklyn mm -hmm. dude, come from that era, yeah. to see, like, you know, I, I know that, you know, Biggie, he went out his way to sort of, it see, what the story y'all told was he went out his way to put y'all on, people from the neighborhood, because that's what he we did. were taught we were supposed to do. Yeah. And y'all became a family, even if y'all wasn't blood, y'all became a family. Yes. And like every family, you go through drama, you go through trouble and yep. trials and tribulations, but to see y'all on that stage, y'all yeah. have a unique uh, responsibility as the mm. custodians and cust caretakers mm -hmm. of Big's legacy. That yeah. regardless of what y'all go through, you, Puff, C's, Faith, everybody who was around yep. at that time, y'all yep. have that in common. Yep. And it was very important for us as hip hop fans to see that come together at BET. That was like everything for me. And you know why I say like Big went out his way mm -hmm. to really like go hard for us? Because he knew who the real rappers were, mm -hmm. right? Me, Banga, and Trife, mm -hmm. and Clap. We were like the real rappers. Mm -hmm. But he was like, this is my everyday crew. Mm -hmm. Who, before he was in rapping, he hanging out on the blocks with. Mm -hmm. And me, he see me all the time or whatever. He said, Bugsy, you coming with us. Mm -hmm. He didn't know how to rap <laughs> at all. <laughs> right. <laughs> he ain't never even, but he, but he, he never even went in the studio. Wow. Mm -hmm. But he was like, I'm taking my dude. Mm. I'm taking Cheek Del Vec. Mm -hmm. He ain't never. <laughs> but you know, Cheek was like his dude in the street holding him mm -hmm. down. And the thing is, is he made sure everybody ate. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. And I love that about him to this day. Like, I'm taking everybody with me. And mm -hmm. he gave everybody a chance. He did get frustrated towards the middle because he put... Everybody, he kicked the door down for everybody, mm -hmm. and he brung everybody through the door. Mm -hmm. Some people have kicked the door down and say, "Okay, now run through it." Mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. kicked the door down mm -hmm. and dragged everybody through. Mm -hmm. And when he did that, he expected the same mind frame that he had to process mm -hmm. in everybody. And unfortunately, it didn't. Right, because that's what he was doing with Puff. And sometimes you gotta have tough love for your guys. Like, mm -hmm. yo, look, I'm, I'm I'm kicking the door down. I'm trying to, I I brought you to the money. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and, and, and be a man and get your money the way you know. Do what you gotta do. Right. You here now? I can't carry you all the way. Right. Because you know, so I get it. He was you know? teaching people how to fish so they could continue to eat. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the influences of um early MCs, but in particular uh, female MCs, mm -hmm. uh, two acts in particular that I feel like I've heard you speak on, but I, I think it's I could see them in your style. Mm -hmm. um, MC Light. Yes. And Salt and Pepper. Oh my God, my favorites. Right. Those was my favorites, literally. Okay. Like, as a little girl, I would listen to them and watch them. And I knew, one thing I knew about me and MC Light, we was from Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. So I knew that me and her style was exactly the same. Right. And her voice, I kind of think in similarity mm -hmm. in voices, her and I mm -hmm. had that. I hear and, it. Yeah, because yeah. that was just everything. Mm -hmm. And her style of like how she moved with the fellas. Mm -hmm. Cause I I grew up around nothing but guys. I was the only girl all the time. Right. In my whole family, only girl most of the time. Right. And then it's like when I saw Light and she was the only girl all the time, most of the time too. Mm -hmm. I was like, Dad, she's really me. And then Salt and Pepper had the sexiness that I knew mm -hmm. I had. Mm -hmm. Cause see, NC Light was always rough. That's what she didn't really care to be nothing else. Right. But look, I'm just a rough chick. Right. She's like 10% dis. Right. With a pretty face. Right. So you know, it was just like. That's who she was and mm -hmm. who she wanted to be. But Salt and Pepper had everything that I kind of was. It was mm -hmm. like I was sexy, but I was, I was the rough edge and everything. Mm -hmm. 
But I also knew I was different from both of them completely because of my style of rapping was different. Right, right. I was literally the female Biggie. Right. You know? No, nah, I liked I liked how Salt and Pepper um owned the sexuality aggressively. Like mm -hmm. me being a little kid, I'm not gonna front. Like I was going through puberty when Salt and Pepper came out. Yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> And so when Pepper was like, yo, 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 baby pop, yeah, you, come, come and give me, me a kiss. kiss. Better make it fast or oh, else I'm, I'm going to get pissed. <laughs> Can't you hear the music pumping hard like I wish you would? would I was intimidated. It. I was like, oh. she's going to get pissed. You were scared. I better kiss her. <laughs> I better kiss her. You were scared. You were scared. <laughs> a little bit. I, I, grew, I grew into my, my own as a man. But as a kid, I had to, you know what I'm saying? It's a little intimidating. Side note, tell if you need to find some kind of game show where they ask you rap lyrics because you can like just you know yeah. everybody. I just know what, I just like what I like. So good, I love that about yeah. him. I like that's, what I like. That's you know? good. That 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 uh, that was uh, that song. That song was a hit. But what my shit was from Salt Pepper was uh, Get Up, Everybody Get, get Up. up. Boom, yeah, boom, that boom, one. Boom, 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 boom. Right, and Salt was like Salty. That's me. I'm not gonna waste your time on the strength I'll be. That yes. shit's crazy. Um, just, okay, but we can't forget Roxanne and Shante. Oh, we oh, can't. Because, oh my gosh. She, yeah. was, she was my motivation mm -hmm. for rapping and even a little of my style too. Mm -hmm. She, you, she was, she don't get enough credit either. Mm -hmm. She, absolutely. She was one of the first to come in from the street. She mm -hmm. was a hood chick for real. Absolutely. And she, she never lost with, that either. She never lost that. She would come in with mm -hmm. her fur coats like, I'm the F about none of you niggas. Right. I'm about to hold my own as a girl. Right. But nobody knows that because that's like super before everybody's era. Mm -hmm. I was a baby when I was watching her. But she was a baby when she came out. Exactly. How old was she when she dropped? I think it was 15, like 13, 15. Did you guys see the Netflix uh, movie, Roxanne uh, Roxanne? Uh, no. Oh, I, need okay. to, I didn't know that existed. Yeah, I need to yeah, watch that. I don't know if it's still out on the I need Netflix. To, that's crazy. But see, that's how I knew I had a lot in connection with her, because when I came out, it was a baby. But people mm -hmm. didn't know, because my music was so explicit. Yeah, it was. So raunchy yeah. and, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. But I was a baby. I was, not, I was like, fresh out of high school. Mm -hmm. And so the thing is, is like... I looked at her and I really identified with her a lot because mm -hmm. she was hood and street. And what I always search for in mm -hmm. the celebrities that I like, mm -hmm. I would always search for like when I see them in person. Mm -hmm. Roxy and Shantae used to come to the skating ring. Okay. You remember? Okay. She used to come to Empire, Empire a couple right. of times. And I would li really literally see her with street dudes, mm -hmm. like hanging out. And I'm like, Dad, that's, that's me it. all day. Right. Like you would see her really living the way she was talking. And that's just how I feel like I. That was important. That was important. And, and you couldn't be into hip hop if you was yeah. faking the funk. It wasn't authentic. Yeah. Son. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's go back to Brooklyn, yeah. son. Yeah. Son. Let's. You, some of the stuff that's going on now mm -hmm. could never, never, never in Brooklyn, ever. It was blasphemy, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And now it's so accepted, mm -hmm. you know? That's absolutely right. Um, just being Little Kim, mm -hmm. being a woman who changed the game in, at, a, at a time, it's, oh, it's still a boys club, but mm -hmm. it was even more of a boys club mm -hmm. when you first started. Um, by simply embracing and owning your sexuality, yep. you became a feminist icon, whether you wanted to be or not, yes. in my opinion. Um, you know, there's a lot of, the, uh, th there's a lot of critique about feminism mm -hmm. in black academic circles right now, and just in our community, because there's a there's a uh, a thought that a theory that feminism it's a white woman's is a white woman's thing, and it weakens black men and takes away from black men. That's not something I personally believe. Yeah. There's another uh, uh, way to des describe it as womanism. womanism. Uh, black women within the feminist movement back in the day felt like feminism wasn't addressing the issues of black women. Mm -hmm. So they said, well, we're, we're womanist, right? Womanist is like feminist values where women should be equal to men, mm -hmm. and we're gonna fight for that, but also you have to uh, intersect with race, and mm -hmm. race is important. And when it comes to fighting for equal pay, don't just fight for equal pay for white women to be right. equal to black, like right. black women, Latina women, everybody needs to be equal together. Right, Yeah. but beyond you know the criticisms of, of feminism that people in our community have, mm -hmm. um, do you embrace any of this? It's always been a gray area for me mm -hmm. because my thing is, I definitely, in some way, am a feminist because mm -hmm. I support my women. That's the one thing that was always my main focus mm -hmm. is that my girls had somebody mm -hmm. to speak mm -hmm. for them all the time. Mm -hmm. 
one thing I definitely was not was one of the feminists that you just explained right. that they thought it was because I it was never kill all men, right. mm-hmm. you know, or like men are horrible. Right. Never. That's not, the you people don't have to bash to bring up. Yeah, people yeah. in the feminist community say that's not a real feminist. Someone who would bash See, a man and, to be. Yeah, and yeah. I agree that that's yeah. you can't bash them, I mean, but there's a but there is a crew that are like that. Oh yeah, yeah. and to be honest with you. Men uh, and, and with patriarchy, we've been running this shit into the ground for so long yeah. that some of us might have to just take our lumps, even if yeah. we even if we get it on uh, innocently. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Like just because of how you know, just as a man, I have a position of privilege. Even as a black man, yeah. I have a position of privilege over over black women, over yeah. gay black people. Like yeah. as a straight black man, I have a, I have to respect that mm-hmm. and. My blackness doesn't give me my privilege, right? But my maleness does. Right? Exactly. And as a as a female, when I was coming into the game and I did the hardcore poster, mm-hmm. the famous squat, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like that was game changing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And so many women were hating on me. Like mm-hmm. I was surprised mm-hmm. because it was sexy and to me it was done. Cla- it was it wasn't tasteless. Mm-hmm. It was classy. It was cute. I was fresh faced. I was. It was. Mm-hmm. Oh my god. It's a beautiful piece of art. Yes. Of that's being sexy. Like that. yeah. Thank you. It was a beautiful piece of art. Well, that's the thing is that it. with women, it's the same thing as with some with with some black people do. It's like you you let the ideas of others cloud you in your mind. So it's like you hear men saying what. A woman's supposed to be, right. and then they see a woman that's a hundred percent themselves doing yeah. whatever they want to do, and they don't understand that concept right. because they've been brainwashed and they right. don't even understand that. Oh, I can do this too. Right. right, I can be me. Right. And so, with that being said, I kind of went into a place like, oh my god, did I do something wrong? Because there was like activists. the backlash, mm-hmm. backlash, mm-hmm. smashing CDs, all that stuff, mm-hmm. all that stuff, right? But for every time they did that. Uh-huh. It made me millions of fans bigger. Mm-hmm. Like I'm talking about to the point where there were other activists taken up for me. That's right. There were women that I thought that were hating on me coming in crews like, she's our voice, we right. love her, right. calling me a goddess and all this stuff. And I was like, whoa, mm-hmm. this is big. Mm-hmm. Like this is bigger than me. Right. It was bigger than me, right. and I, I said, "This is." I didn't know what I was doing. Like I, I naturally went down into that squat pose, mm-hmm. but Biggie picked that picture, mm-hmm. and he was like, "The label was like, oh, are you sure you want to?" <laughs> right. I don't know. Like we don't know if we can. Right. And he's like, "Trust me, this is the one." And then they was like, "Well, let's have a backup." He said, "No, there's no backup. This is the one." So you didn't know that you were about to change the world. That you were gonna have to put all. You were putting all that extra pressure on yourself to be a voice for women that couldn't be as creative as you or speaking no. as you. No, never. I feel like Biggie knew. Mm. He was a vision, visionary A&R, visionary lyricist. Oh, yeah. Saw he, the whole vision. He knew that picture was going to be big. He, I don't know if he knew it was going to be super duper like that cause, but because that was on every man's jail cell mm. wall that you can <laughs> yeah, you, you, you have a lot of raunchy, sexy verses, but one of the raunchiest and sexiest is from How Many Licks. Oh, one of my favorites. Yes. Uh, okay. Actually, every verse on that song. Is I wasn't very... allowed to sing that song. <laughs> <laughs> but you talk about that, that poster, particularly in that record, mm-hmm. and talk about you talk about how, um, what the effect it had on men in prison. Yes, because... <laughs> You know, there is, I don't know if you, if you go on YouTube, you could probably pull him up, but there's a guy mm-hmm. and, you know, he doesn't, he's, he's like, you know, a regular guy and he's on the train and mm-hmm. he's being interviewed by somebody and he's talking about how deep the hardcore poster was mm-hmm. and how people were getting killed over that poster in jail. Mm-hmm. And he was serious. It was a serious, deep conversation. And I'm like, and people were getting killed over mm-hmm. this poster? Like, that's something you can't process. Right. Because it makes your mind say, Dag, this is really something historic. But, Dag, do you want people getting killed? Or yeah, like, mm-hmm. and I imagine it's conflicting for you because, yeah. you, I, in my opinion, you can't take that on yourself because you're being a creative artist. That problem, men being... First of all, the prison industrial complex is so fucked up, and mm. it's, it's a money making mm. business. First oh, yeah. of all, yes, and most of the people oh, in prisons do not. Do you you would know, know do not belong in prison. Mm. Um, There's one right now, Rodney Reed, that needs to be released. <sighs> Release mm. him. 
Yes, give us more information on that because you were telling me about that earlier this morning. Well, pretty much he's in Texas. He's been in jail for 21 years for a crime he didn't commit, Mm -hmm. a crime that somebody already bragged about committing. And the person came through and said, okay, this guy has bragged about committing it. The guy was in jail for raping someone. Mm -hmm. Uh, The woman was killed by rape and strangulation. And there he's scheduled to be killed November 20th by injection. So there's a... a, what is it called? Petition, right? Petition, there. yeah. At www.freerodney.com. Oh yeah, we gonna pray for him. Yeah, he needs right. to come home ASAP. But on top of on top of just the prison shit being fucked up, people in general are repressed sexually, and men are taught that sex and relationship with women about conquering and mm-hmm. how many women you can have. And so you get men, you lock men up with other men and we don't we don't talk honestly about sex. Mm-hmm. We don't deal honestly about sex. I remember when I was coming up, like just to keep it a buck. Like it, how I came up, we used to make fun of each other. Like, oh, you jerk off. Like that used to be taboo. <laughs> it's, it used to be taboo for for black yeah. kids. White kids, it wasn't taboo for. Oh, no. For, for black, black kids, it's, it was taboo for. So when you go, and then you got men in jail who don't have any idea what sex is, mm-hmm. any type of relationship, and then they have a relationship with this poster, but yeah. then it becomes an emotional relationship mm-hmm. that does, has nothing to do with you as a person. Yeah. It has to do with society. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But it, but your poster becomes a catalyst. Right. For this. And, I'm, it's and it's it's funny that you bring that up because here's now I speak for all black women mm-hmm. too because this is this I speak for black women when I say this because a lot of um, unanswered questions and when women are in abusive relationships, mm-hmm. when a lot of unanswered questions is why do you stay? Mm-hmm. Well, we were also taught to stick by mm, our men. That's right. And we were also taught that no matter what, you know, be his rock. That's right. And because of what you said, we are sensitive to that, mm-hmm. and we get that, and we understand that. Mm-hmm. So we stay to be the light mm-hmm. and hope and prayers of God coming in and doing his job mm-hmm. and helping our men, our young black men, mm-hmm. become this strong black man. That's right. And sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. Of course, we've got to know when it's time to leave. but. Mm-hmm. You know, I think a lot of people are hard on these women who stay in these mm-hmm. abusive relationships, but you don't know until you're in one. Right, and then just we have we had a lot of people on the show that speak about that, like Patrice Calores from Black Lives Matter, and mm-hmm. people who have been in abusive situations speaking on it. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that people don't understand. And for me, as a man, mm-hmm. I'm still learning as a man in my 40s. I'm still learning that. Women, when they speak up, the, the ramifications that come mm-hmm. with that. Yeah. Whether it be you lose a job or you get yeah. killed. Or you get killed. Yeah. It's or like, you get killed. Yeah. And most of these women have children. Mm-hmm. Like so that's 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 I, I had to really speak on that because mm-hmm. that's a hard thing to deal with. And mm-hmm. as a woman, I we've all been through that. We've all been through the we've been there. And again, like I said, you know, Hopefully it will change where people will, will support it more and support the women who stays mm-hmm. more and you know But again, I am also here to say that the woman has to know when it's time to leave, mm-hmm. you know, especially if you have kids Now see Dolores Tucker mm-hmm. Was crusading against the music business. Oh, yes <laughs> <laughs> We remember her right. <laughs> Tupac rapped about her you know, she she made a headway. You know, it, 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 with with crusading against uh, bitter black woman. Uh, I agree. She was bitter, um, but she weaponized you and your lyrics in her fight against the music business. She mm-hmm. she chose Little Kim as this is an example of what I'm fighting against. Mm-hmm. How did that make you feel with that? You know, it's funny because it's at first I was like. <gasps> you know, mm-hmm. I was young. I mm-hmm. was young. So this is an old woman. An old woman shunning me so I'm mm-hmm. like but you it, wanted to respect your elders yes mm-hmm. but it took that long for me to be like oh fuck her <laughs> <laughs> she's a hater right. and they're bitter mm-hmm. they're bit and, and what I've learned because let me tell you why I say she's bitter oh woman f her because <laughs> let me tell you why because as an older woman you have a responsibility mm-hmm. to teach mm-hmm. that's right the youth that's coming up and if you are bitter you're mad at me for something else Mm -hmm. you mad because i'm this sexy young pretty thing Mm -hmm. that you wish you could have been that you didn't have the balls to be Mm -hmm. when you was my age Mm -hmm. and you didn't have the 
fame and stardom that you probably wanted mm -hmm. and you didn't have the money that I was making at such a young age. Mm -hmm. That's bitterness because the real mm -hmm. older black woman would have said, listen, I am, I'm going to support you, but right. I want you to think and look at this differently. You mm -hmm. know, if there was a critique, critique right. of love. Come speak to me. Come mm -hmm. support me still because I'm still young. Mm -hmm. I'm young and I'm, I'm trying to make it through life. Mm -hmm. You know, that's a good point. So, words of inspiration to see your way or whatever, if that's the case, you know. Instead so, of trying to break you down. Instead of trying to break you down mm -hmm. and hate on you. So, to mm -hmm. me, I was like, whatever. Yeah. Let's get into, first of all, well, Crush On You is my favorite song from you, like that verse. Yeah. But uh, I actually just did karaoke, and I did your verse from Lady Marmalade. I did see that. Yes, I tagged you in it, and I said, <laughs> Ty Lib, put me on an album. I did see that. So, no, you was uh, going hard, though. I killed it, because I love Lil' oh, yeah. I did the kick in the beginning and everything. Oh, you <laughs> gotta send it to me. <laughs> oh, oh, don't you worry. You're gonna get it sent. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, Lady Marmalade set a blueprint for um, rappers doing collabs with pop stars. Um, how did that come about? Did you know that song was gonna be so huge? And it did get to number one. Like, how did that change your life? Yeah, you know, and it's funny. I've, I've always thought about that, because, like, I can't. I hear like some people who like now or like you know some of the artists now mm -hmm. or like not even artists mainly like some of the like DJs or people like people who are like uh, you know that that you know play the music you know, mm -hmm. or whatever and they say stuff like you know it's more uh, music is more poppy and mainstream. Mm -hmm. I'm like, but we had this like mm -hmm. we've done this like and we've got. Number one records. Like huge, that record was number one for like six weeks. No, 13 weeks. 13 weeks, right. You the first uh, female artist to go number one on, on yeah. hip hop artist to go number one on Yeah, Google. and I'm like, well, this was already done, but okay. Mm -hmm. But it's like, when you are a part of that, mm -hmm. you don't know that that sets a trend mm -hmm. for something else to, you know, come mm -hmm. because it's something that you don't even realize that I'm just rapping like I rap, mm -hmm. still talking like I talk, mm -hmm. and you have mainstream, you know, white, black, everybody right. singing that still song. It's such, a, it's such a powerful song. I have like- Patti LaBelle and them was like- I have 482 million listeners on Pandora, mm -hmm. and that's one of my biggest records. That's the, mm -hmm. that's the number one? Yeah, one of them, mm -hmm. I mean, there's, there's, there's a, the interesting thing mm -hmm. is my biggest record right now on there is a record that I did recently with Kevin Gates. Okay. Oh. That's interesting. Yeah. I'm talking about Uber Crush on You. Right. That's, 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 that's the moment now. Like that's But it's right. millions, mm. millions of listeners on that record when you would think, you know, the iconicness of Crush on You. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that Kevin Gates, I love Kevin Gates, but a record like that is still new. We don't know where that record's gonna go, mm -hmm. or whether it's gonna be hot now and then it'll go away, but mm -hmm. that Crush on You, maybe it's not gonna be the hottest now, but it's gonna keep. It's like, forever it, hot, it, It's forever. Yeah, there's certain records of No Time, Big Mama Things, certain, there's certain records that you got that's and like. And that's why I love. Jump Off, Lighters Up. Yeah, oh. and Lighters Up is one of my favorite songs. <laughs> oh. And yeah, that's why I love the matrimony mm -hmm. of how I make my music, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? From then to now, I love the matrimony. And the thing is, is I love the fact that I could be in the car and I could hear a Cardi B song, mm -hmm. Migos record. I could hear, you know, I don't know, a newer record that just came mm -hmm. out now, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And then hear Crush On You. Oh, yeah. Right. And then hear Light of the And it still time. makes sense. And yeah. Still, I DJ uh, now, I started DJ, and I, my style is playing new records with old records and, and not have not having it separate. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, those, that, those, that's why I named, like, you know, in my set, mm -hmm. the Lil' Kim records that stay in my set that don't leave mm -hmm. are Crush On You, Get Money, No Time, um, Jump off, mm -hmm. um, and um, lighters, lighters up. up. Lighters up. Lighters up is a is a is a is a. Lighters up is a song that mm -hmm. brought that song brought me to Croatia mm -hmm. and, yeah. and Romania. Mm. I went there right, and mm -hmm. um, so I had a show on the beach. You know, the Black Sand is mm -hmm. in Romania, and it was on the beach and just all type of mixture of people. Mm -hmm. But when I tell you, like rich white people. Yeah. Rich white people. And it's this couple, this <laughs> rich white couple. You can tell because they had on Louis Vuitton boat shoes. Right. Oh, wow. And they had on cardigans. Right. And they were sitting there, and um, one of my friends was standing next to them that was there with me, a foreman. Mm -hmm. And they were like, um, oh, my God, can you introduce us to her? Mm -hmm. 
And so they introduced me to mm -hmm. them. And they were like, Kim, we were just about to leave because, you know, it's almost past our bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> and so she said, but then you did Lighters Up. Lighters and we up. couldn't leave. And I was like, right. that's your favorite song? And it starts with, I come from Brooklyn. Right. Best Die. Best Die. Yeah, yes. man. I was like, Lighters Up. You would never think. I would, though. It makes, it makes sense. It makes sense on a lot of levels. Um, you predicted your success with Lady Marmalade on Crush On You. Did I? You said, yeah. like Lady Marmalade. You said that on that record. How many? That you said that it's on that crazy. record, and it was, it was, even... you, yeah, it's like you, you foreshadowed. See, that, that was God right invention. there. Yeah. That's God right there. Uh, I was just at the dime yesterday, and I, they played Crush on You, and I was like, they better play the little Kim. Better play the little. <laughs> I get you mad. got to know. That's how you know. That's how you know a DJ is not real. If a DJ, yeah. if a DJ plays Crush on You, it does not. It does not the play the Kim verse. That means the DJ does not care about the women in the party. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. Everyone turns into Lil' Kim in that in that moment, and they are rapping it like they in the music video. Yo, that's crazy. It's so crazy. Um, you're a style icon. Uh, Beyonce dressed up for you as Halloween a couple of years ago. Where did you get your style from? Was, did it like evolve as you got bigger, or was it something that was already in, inside of you? Well, first of all, I still walk around with an oxygen tank after she did that. <laughs> okay. You know, it was, it was, it was the ultimate homage, because we can't deny she's that bitch. Yeah. So, you know, it was very, 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 very dope of her to do that and say and call it National Little Kim Day. Like, that was so, so, so sick and dope. And um, she's a visioneer too, so for her to do that mm -hmm. and have that vision and to do more than one, two, three, do five pictures or six, mm -hmm. whatever it was, that was like the ultimate. And I just, it, it showed, you know, my impact on everyone, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. no matter how big, you know? So that was, that was dope. That was really, really dope. And where did you get your style from? Where do you think it originated from? My mom. My mom was fly. I love that. She, who's, your, who's your fashion icon? My mom. My, my mom, mom, she was fly. Yeah. Oh my gosh, she was fly. And you know, I remember one time she was taking me to daycare mm -hmm. and she had on these high heel, um, what was the name brand at that time? It was like Liz Claiborne or mm -hmm. something like that. That was fly, you know? Right. No, but yeah. she always had Gucci bags, always mm -hmm. had little like, you know, name brand Gucci bags, mm -hmm. you know? And she's taking me into daycare, and she slipped and oh, no. fell. She fell on the floor, <laughs> and I will never forget. Oh, my this. God. She slipped and fell on the floor, and I will never forget this. And an Ishimiyaki lipstick rolled across my mouth. I'm like, is that name brand lipstick? She's <laughs> like, oh, Ma, this is too fly. It was right. like YSL, whatever. Whatever she had, it was just, everything was name brand. And I just remember that picture, mm. like all her stuff fell out of her bag. And she was just fly. And mm. I, I used to be, as a kid, a baby, not mm -hmm. even a kid, because it was a baby, I would, I was obsessed with mahogany and Lady Sings the Blues. Oh, man. If you look oh, at man. the fashion Diana Ross. in there, I was obsessed with that. Mm. My mom said, as a baby, like if I was crying or uncomfortable, she put that movie on and I just. It's sat. black excellence right there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah absolutely. Um, you're. Getting into fashion, like I was saying earlier, you um, you uh, took the fashion world by storm. Mm -hmm. You were taking chances, doing rock and runways. You became friends with Marc Jacob. That's my bestie. Right? I love him. Y'all would be surprised at how freaking cool and gangster he is. He like I would not be. Me neither. I'm a fan. Yeah, the people he true. hangs out with, we have to think that he is. <laughs> Listen, I had friends I knew for years, mm -hmm. big celebrity friends. Mm -hmm. Never came to see me in jail. Never. Mark, like. He, that man, from the up to the last day, he mm -hmm. wrote me every day. Mm -hmm. He put money in my conversary, mm -hmm. which I had too much money in my conversary, mm -hmm. you know. But he was so supportive of mm -hmm. me, and I, he was somebody. I mean, if I called, answer, it, it, he's somebody I would have never thought, right. you know. Um, Oprah sent me a couple books mm -hmm. and wrote in them. That's dope. It was really, really dope. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was just like certain people who were more supportive than some of my closest mm -hmm. celebrity friends. Yeah, it's not, it's not, friendship is not about how people behave when you're up. It's about oh, how people yeah, behave when you're down. down. And, yeah. But shout out to Missy and Queen Latifah because they came and, you know, my, my, Patty LaBelle's my godmom mm -hmm. in the industry. Mm -hmm. And she came to that prison looking <laughs> oh, like, Patty, yes. she came to that prison like, I gotta go. She said, uh-uh, you think I'm, you think I'm gonna go have my, come see my god baby? Mm -mm. <laughs> And she came like she was coming to do a show. Shout out to Patty. Uh, 
You're I'm always like, on stage, honey. Yeah, that girl. Right. Me you ever seen her um, uh, screaming on, barking on the, the, the background singers? I'll make sure the, I look yeah. it up. Today. Yeah, I can, I can yeah. imagine that. Or, I know her. Or Quest Love telling a story about how Patti LaBelle promised him some chicken wings. Oh my and god. And he had to stalk her for some chicken wings. <laughs> Google that. Quest Love Patty. I'm going to Google that because that is funny. Like, yeah. they are somebody, Missy and Queen Nineteen. They, those are my girls. Like, real, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but I wanted to bring up, we had Perry uh, Farrell, who's a uh, lead singer, rock and roll guy from Jane's Addiction, Porno mm -hmm. for Pyros. And he became like a famous rock DJ. Like, when Mark, Jake, Mark Jacobs was having these elaborate parties. Mm -hmm. And he described this party that I feel like you might have been at. Like, he, <laughs> you know, he, he says he was DJing this party. And he says that he talks about meeting Donald Trump at this party. Mm. And I, I said that if you're, if you're a celebrity, you've been famous at all, uh, it, it, and, now, and now it's times when Donald Trump is cracking, you were in a room with Donald Trump and you met Donald Trump and you did The Apprentice, right? I did his show twice. Twice. Mm -hmm. And we had the, he was so excited because he made a lot of money off of us mm -hmm. <laughs> from the moment, right. I'm afraid. But he, um, he was... When I tell you, he's always been super supportive. I first met him because mm -hmm. he invited me to a private auction that he, he used to have a, these private auction dinners. Mm -hmm. And I'll never forget when I came through the door, he was with, I, he wasn't with Melania at the time. He was with the one before her and mm -hmm. not, not Ivana. Mm -hmm. He was with, I forget her name, but he was like, honey, there's little Kim. And they were so excited. <laughs> he was so nice, mm -hmm. so respectful, so cool. And we developed a, re a relationship from then. So mm -hmm. I did. The Apprentice one time, mm -hmm. and he had this party in Hugo Boss, I think, or something like that. Mm -hmm. And we talked, and he was like, you should have your own doll lines. Mm -hmm. You should have this. And he, he was just all this stuff mm -hmm. that he saw me mm -hmm. having. And I was like, wow, he, Donald Trump sees this for me? Mm -hmm. I need to look into this. And then I did The Apprentice, and I had a package with, I think, you 2 mm -hmm. It was me and you 2 together. And The Apprentice had to go out, and they had to sell this package. Anyway, we won by mm -hmm. a landslide and you know he was so happy and you know he just showed so much respect for my craft and what mm -hmm. I do and I had no idea he even knew who I was yeah I think that um <laughs> I, I, the reason, yeah I bring it up because in that era like you know Trump obviously has become a, a, a pivotal figure and he's become someone who uh, is polarizing mm -hmm. and there's people who are like MAGA 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 and people like fuck Donald Trump you know mm -hmm. YG and, and Nipsey made a song called fuck Donald Trump mm -hmm. um, but in that era he was just a part of the landscape mm -hmm. and he was just a celebrity mm -hmm. um, you know I wanted to maybe ask to ask you about why is it that rappers saw Donald Trump as a symbol of put him in his lyrics so much and saw him as a symbol of decadence, a symbol of wealth and a symbol of that's what we're striving to get towards. Mm -hmm. And um, do you think that it's fair for people to say, well, because rappers supported him and he supported rappers and there was a, a, a seemed to be a beneficial relationship mm -hmm. that we should judge him as president by that guy? I'm, I'm in a gray area because at mm -hmm. the end of the day, I know the Trump mm -hmm. from, he's such a nice man. I don't, I've never, I just, I don't, and I really mm -hmm. feel like maybe a lot of the things he does now is just not him. Mm -hmm. He's got a different position now, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? He has to talk differently or whatever. Mm -hmm. I, I don't condone a lot of the things he does, mm -hmm. but I will never shun him. That's yeah. just not me. I'm not a, I'm of God. I will not do that. I, but mm -hmm. I don't agree with a lot of the things he says and does. Right. Just like I don't agree with a lot of things my, my, my family or friends do. Right. Some stuff, you know, you got to be able to call somebody out and say, look, this is wrong. You should think about this differently. But you don't. Right. You know. Absolutely. You're making me think of my relationship with Kanye because that's how oh. I feel. Because people, people I, I know. the same way. Yeah, people I know will be like, fuck Kanye. He's canceled. Yeah. And I'm like. I'm not going to judge you for feeling that mm -hmm. way, right. but I can't say that because right. of my personal relationship. Right, you, you know, know like, right. Like I agree with you, and I, I've even I spoke speak out against it. Um, but but I understand that. Um, I think what the what the problem is is that I think it goes for any of us. Mm -hmm. Like I'm looked at as Talib Kweli, the conscious lyricist, right? Mm -hmm. I'm looked at as like, but let me run for president. Let me run for office. That's a whole different level of That's a level whole different of level scrutiny. of mind frame that you have to think now. Right. And you have to become almost black, black heart. How do you run a country like this yeah, and I, not be black heart? I mean, it's... it's really I, I, I think it's an interesting point. I do agree 
that the job of the president of America mm -hmm. is to do American business. Mm -hmm. And American business is ugly and it's colonialism, it's imperialism. We talking dropping bombs, we talking yeah. putting kids in cages. Like, oh, I, I, was, I was friendly with Obama, I was event, uh, invited to the White House. Mm -hmm. I went to a lot of great parties at the White House. Mm -hmm. It was fantastic. Yeah, I can you imagine. Know what I'm but I, I disagree with Obama's drone program. Mm -hmm. I disagree with the Obama administration immigration policy. Mm -hmm. A lot of stuff we've seen from the Trump administration oh, yeah, yeah. was also, in terms of immigration, mm -hmm. was also happening with the Obama policy. Mm -hmm. He was just smoother with it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But Trump yeah. does so many things that it's like you can focus on the immigration more now, and it looks like an even worse problem. But it's funny that you guys talked about Trump and Kanye, because when you have a personal relationship with somebody, it's a little bit harder to just kick them out because of uh, something yeah. that they've done, because you mm -hmm. know them personally. Yeah. And I was just talking about Trump at, a, um, at Jeff Ross' house the other day, and I was saying, I was like, you know, it's crazy because I feel like if Trump wasn't president, he probably would be somebody I would want to be around because I do enjoy people that, you know, go outside of the box. Right. But as you said, I feel like it's a lot of stuff that it's like, as a president, you, you wouldn't be doing this. Right. You wouldn't be saying these yeah. hateful things because he needs to be liked by a certain amount of people. Yeah. And it's like crazy because like, the Trump that people come on this, this show and talk about is totally different than the, the Trump, Trump that's running America. Yeah, like I said, he was very motivated when I met him. He was like, you need that, this, you have that. That's motivating to hear from a billionaire. Like, come mm -hmm. on, mm -hmm. you know? So it's like, he's he was always a businessman. So in running the country, he's gonna think like a businessman as well. Right. But times two million, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's, that's that's my issue. I don't think you can run a country like a business. No. But that's yeah. I mean that's a whole different thing. You can't, too. but he's gonna think like that You're right. times that's exactly two billion, because right. that's what he is. That's you know? exactly right. Um one thing that is interesting about you that I think people do not know and I think that you do not get enough credit for is the tons of charity work that you do. Yeah. I mean you do a you do more charity work than the average celebrity in your position. Yeah. Excuse me. And you do a lot of tra charity work with different um for different causes, mm -hmm. but it seems to be AIDS awareness is the closest to your heart. AIDS, children, mm -hmm. and um, women. Mm -hmm. And now I've adapted women in prison okay. by coming home. It's very important. Yeah, I have a girlfriend named Sadia who I was locked up with, mm -hmm. and she my little big sis. I call her my little big sis. That's my dog right there. I love her. And we're putting something together now. And um, we kind of started it some months back, mm -hmm. but um, I want to put it into progress because a lot of these women, they come home, and you know, we, we, it's hard for guys, but it's hard for women too when they come home. I they would imagine it would be harder. It's already harder for us anyway, so yeah. it's gonna just. But then, you know, it's harder, but I mean, women are, you know, I don't know, it's, it's harder, it's just as hard, I would say. Right, okay. I would say it's just as hard because you know, women are women, so we mm -hmm. can kind of work in some places. Anywhere. You say it's not as hard because women are stronger. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, but but men have it hard. Though. They absolutely. Have it hard. It's absolutely. Really hard. And it, I, Cause, I, I, cause, I'm glad you pushed back on that because it's important to understand in these conversations that yeah. our challenges are different. Yeah, they are. Yeah. I don't care what anybody say. Yes, yes, that's yeah, for totally. sure. That's right. true. Black women have to stand up for black men the same way that black right. women stand because for black men. Right. Because if we can go for a job, and they might look at the, our background record like, oh, they, she's been in jail for this, she's been in jail for that, oh, she did this, she did that. Mm -hmm. But if you're a woman running that company, you're not going to be that intimidated oh, yeah. or scared that she's mm -hmm. something, you know. But you're if right. you see a man and he's mm -hmm. got that same record, you're probably going to be more intimidated right. by that. So they're probably quicker to say, uh-uh, to the guy and maybe to the girl. Right, you're right. I agree. You know? And then even, like, well, I guess so also in, like, jobs or whatever, because, like, when you, I don't know, you, you didn't make it about race, but I have a problem with doing that. But, you know, like, even, like, in a restaurant or whatever, like, a black woman could go up and you could be a server if they're looking for a token black person, but mm -hmm. as a black man, they're going to be like, ah, no. Yeah, it's a little harder. Yeah. Yeah. The challenges are, are, are different. But, yeah, I've done a lot of charity. I did down, I, one of my favorites was when I used to go to the hospitals. And I used to do that a lot. Mm -hmm. And I also gave, like, like I would do this stuff when there were no, like, Instagram cameras and right. stuff like that. That's like, what I, I know about you is, like, yeah. you, your charity work, the only, the, like, I knew about, like, the work with Mac, the fundraising stuff, mm -hmm. you know, and I knew that, I knew, about, I, heard, I heard about uh, Kim Cares. Yeah, little, uh, little Kim Cares little Kim org, yeah. yeah. But look, like, researching for this interview, mm -hmm. I didn't understand the depth of the oh, charity, yeah. like this, like paragraphs and paragraphs of charity. Yeah, like I went to, I had a show in Jamaica, mm -hmm. and I, I purposely wanted to do this. Mm -hmm. um, I did this show, mm -hmm. and I took the check from that show, mm -hmm. and I went to this small town, who they couldn't 
they wanted to build a school, but they needed a certain more, you know, more amount of money. Mm -hmm. And um, no one in the town, you know, would give it up or whatever. And they've gone to certain people and they asked or whatever. So I purposely went there. I did the show, mm -hmm. took that check, yeah. and I gave it to the town because the kids' feet were bleeding. Oh, no. Seriously, it was a true story. The kids' feet were bleeding. They had blisters on them and all of that mm -hmm. stuff because they were walking miles to get to the nearest school because that place is like in a, in a place where it's far away from everything. Mm -hmm. So the kids had to walk so far. So they were doing that to put a school closer for the kids. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Um, rap has always been haunted by homophobia, but you have came out as an ally for the LGBTQI community very early on. Uh, what made, what led you to wanting to be a part of that movement? Well, I'm gay. <laughs> I'm just joking. I was like, I'm like. Yeah. <laughs> because I remember the lyric when you was like, oh, my mouth this ain't was no like, lesbian what? flow. Uh, <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. Come on. Okay. No, I'm joking. I was like, I, from a kid, I've always had that gay best friend. Uh, you gotta, if you a girl and you fly and you love clothes, you always got you a gotta gay have best friend. Somebody, yes. you, I always <laughs> had a gay best friend. I'm telling you, and I understand mm -hmm. my gay friends and the LGBT community. They are hard workers, mm -hmm. and they work really hard, and they're very, very good to you. When you support them, they support you, and that's all the friendship I need. Mm -hmm. If I'm your friend, whether you're a guy or a girl, and you've been showing me love and supporting me in everything I do, I'm and I'm not going to support you back. Right. I'm going to support you even above and beyond because you believed in me from the beginning, and that's how they are right. with me. They've been that way from the beginning of my career biggest supporters mm -hmm. and they understood me mm -hmm. and I understood them because I grew up with that too so it's, I think it's easy to be like I support gay marriage or I'm not a homophobe but you take took the extra step of going to like pride marches mm -hmm. and stuff yeah. like that and yeah. you're early on that and hip-hop is like Jasmine was saying um did you receive any backlash for this um I did sometimes but not in a bad way mm -hmm. but it was like why why are you like I'm in my heart I couldn't understand why I think I even walked down on somebody saying asking mm -hmm. me why would you like, well, you sound stupid. Mm -hmm. Like, because ignorance is bliss. Like, ignorance is just mm -hmm. ignorance. But one of the things that also led me to that is because, like, having, like, gay best friends coming up, I saw how they go through they oh, go yeah. through challenges. They go through yeah. things. Yeah. I know people who've killed themselves because yeah. their moms didn't real. accept them at a young age. And I'm seeing this, and that hurt my heart. I'm a cancer, so mm -hmm. I'm very sensitive. Uh -oh, I Cleo. already knew. I was waiting to <laughs> end. I was waiting to ease it no, in. You she, know, I know everyone's yeah. voting. No, we're Libras, but she, she. Are you a Libra? I'm a Libra. Oh, okay. both Libras. Yes. She always finds a way Libra to work gang. the signs into the. To see, Cause Listen, see, me too. It I'm, means so much. My sister's a cancer, and you know, I probably drove her crazy a lot because I. <laughs> call me now. Uh, call me now. <laughs> Libras and cancer are kind of good together though, because. Y'all have that wow sign, and then we have this kind of reserve side that is still wow, but mm -hmm. you gotta bring it out of us, and y'all know how to do that. We you bring know that. I mean? We bring we bring that. Oomph out yes, y'all know how to do <laughs> and that. And we're both empathetic, so we can understand other I'm people too. I'm very into signs. Y'all should have okay. more conversation. About yeah. <laughs> Listen, me and Lil Kim are about to be best friends. You see <laughs> yeah. the connection yeah, that we got so right insane. here. Maybe you can, uh, you can like be a stowaway on girls' cruise or something. Listen, I'll, <laughs> tell her, this is why I love you. There you go, put me in, put me on. Now, baby. can we talk about girls' cruise for a yes, second? Yes, let's please. You're an executive producer on the show? Yes, I am. How did this show come about? Well, I am, my management at the time, they had a relationship mm -hmm. with someone at VH1, but I did too. Mm -hmm. I knew them, the same people almost that mm -hmm. they knew, and then we went up there, and we were just having a conversation with them one time. And I've always turned down every reality show that came my way. Mm -hmm. I've turned it down completely. And so people were telling them, you're crazy. You'll never get her to you know, do something like this or whatever. And I went up there and we had just had a conversation. And I was like, yep. Yeah. I said, you know, if I ever do a show and I would have to really have a major hand in it and mm -hmm. it would have to be done the way I want it to be done. Right. And I explained to them how I want it to be done. And they were like, done. Mm. And I was like, oh, okay, this might could work. Mm. Then we had a second meeting, and we were all on the same page, and we figured out the whole show mm. in that second meeting. And I was telling them what I wanted to do. They were telling me what they saw. And in that meeting, this, this, this was two years in the making, that mm -hmm. show. And um, in that meeting is where we figured out this can work. 
-hmm. We were all nervous because mm -hmm. positive reality TV doesn't never That's right. usually. It's a tough game. It's a tough game. Mm -hmm. When we first, mm -hmm. when the show first came out, the premiere, we were all like biting our nails because mm -hmm. we were like, oh God. The ratings were through the roof. Mm -hmm. The response was amazing. You know, BH1 had a beer and pizza party afterwards. They were mm -hmm. excited. Yay. And we were happy. We were happy. Okay. So even if we never did it, even if we never did a season two, in my eyes, mm -hmm. we broke. We, yeah, we broke something. We we it made looks history. Fun. Mm -hmm. It was too much fun. Like it looks like I want to be there. I wanted to you just jump in the TV. It was too yeah, much you fun. Jump in the just TV. like you, I'm here. And you know, having seven girls on a boat. You know, one one being a guy, but he's my gay best friend too. <laughs> <laughs> so having all these girls and stuff on the boat. Of course, naturally, you're gonna have some type of conflict, mm -hmm. but it's how you handle that mm -hmm. and work that out. Seems you know? like a lesson, a growing experience, experience to learn how to grow. Yes, absolutely. That's dope. Um, Def Jam Fight for New York is an iconic game. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes, I was in. I was in. Yes, that game. people love. Now, I'm not a gamer. I just put that out there. I'm not a gamer, but I remember the the impact of Def Jam Fight for New York. And in Def Jam Fight for New York, you did the voiceovers, and people had to beat each other up so they could get to be your man. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> so lit! I was lit. What was that like? It was so funny because I would get guys like, yo, you is the ch on this game. Right. They'd be like, yo, you lit on here. Like everybody <laughs> wanted to ha be me. Like I've heard guys that said when they were about to play the game mm -hmm. that they would fight over who was yeah. gonna. <laughs> That's hilarious. They would fight over who was gonna have me because I was like kicking ass. But like yeah. you said, they would fight to get to be my yeah. man, and I thought that was so cute. Yeah, that's pretty fun. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Royal Reign. What's Little Kim the mom like? Oh. Because we know the celebrity, like, but we don't know. I saw that anything. energy change, too. You're like, oh, she turned, mom, she turned to mom. Baby, that's my love of my life. Like, I'm obsessed with her mm -hmm. to a fault sometimes. I think mm -hmm. I'm just too obsessed with her. You can't She's going to hate me. You can't. That's the job, right? <laughs> yeah, no, that's the job. Mm -hmm. But, you know. She's always going to be my baby. I can't. I mean, she's 14, 21, whatever. She, I just, I love her because she's so smart. She's so funny. Mm -hmm. And she's like a little old soul. She, that little girl has been here before, mm -hmm. maybe seven, nine times. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a sucker. Mm. That's the mama I am. <laughs> she runs over me sometimes. But I'm also firm with her because I will never let her hurt herself or, mm -hmm. you know, anything like that. What if she came to you and said that she wanted to be in the entertainment industry? How would you go about that? Oh, I'm going to be momager. Mm -hmm. Momager. I'm going to be yes. momager. I'm dadager right now. My, my daughter's rapping. Yeah? She's 20. Oh, that's she dope. awesome. She be telling me about all the new rappers. See? Yes. Yeah, that's awesome. She's I love it. Good. I, I I'm going to be a momager. I already, well, I, I'm not even pregnant, guys, or anything. But <laughs> nah, <laughs> but I'm just saying, I already got plans for the baby that's not even here yet. I'm like, oh, oh listen, I already, I already know where you're about to go to work. I'm, you're about to be on all the commercials, See, everything. See, yeah, that's how you think, you know? Yeah. You got to think ahead. Um, there are young girls all over the world mm -hmm. who were in the same situation as Kimberly Jones growing up. Yes. Um, there are young girls that feel trapped mm -hmm. in the hood and trapped in their situations. Mm -hmm. um, you escaped a lot of these traps in grand fashion and became an inspiration for a lot of these young girls. And I'm specifically, because not just young girls, but young, young men as well look up to you too, mm -hmm. but just for the girls, what advice do you have for young girls who might be feeling trapped in the hood or trapped in poverty or trapped in abusive situations? You know, it's, I mean, you know, it's funny because a lot of um, times people come to me and be like, you saved my life. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, me? How? Mm -hmm. That's a huge responsibility. Mm -hmm. And it's a huge compliment at the same time because it's like, I ain't the most saint now. Mm -hmm. I'm not the saint. I, my music is not the most um, American pie. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand what they, they identify mm -hmm. with and when you have that connection, especially in music, mm -hmm. and you connect with somebody because you feel like they brought you through with with their music, keep the music in your head, mm -hmm. you know? Music is good, it's, it's mm -hmm. good, you know? And just, you know, keep, you know, keep striving towards what you want. Mm -hmm. That's it, because 
Once you give up, you never know. It's funny how you said that, you know, you're not a saint, so, you know, for girls to look up to you, but it's like a lot of, cause like, you know, I was a bad child, <laughs> according to my mom, whatever. I got kicked out at 17. She likes to say I kicked myself out, but whatever happened. <laughs> and it's like, when you have people that are rebels and you know, they have their life together, it, it, it makes it, it's even a better thing to look up to because if somebody was a goody two shoes from like start to finish, it's like, what did you really grow from? What did you learn from? What did right. you escape? I can't really relate to that. But What's when you your have, testimony? Exactly, but when yeah. you have someone that's been through something and is on top, it's like, oh, okay, I know that it's, you know, lighting on the other side. Very true. Very true. It's very true. And that's why I say, you know, pick somebody. And even if it's your mom, you know, mm -hmm. pick somebody. Yeah, hold on to them and get the motivation and use mm -hmm. it and apply it to your everyday life. Now, this album just dropped. I've heard rumors that there's another part. There's a part, too, because I got mm -hmm. so many songs that I know the world's going to want to hear, you mm -hmm. know. I got a song with Remy. I got a song yes. with Fab. I got, yeah. I, you know, so it's Misty and Paris mm -hmm. Hilton. So okay. It's dope. It's going to be cool. So beyond the album, what can we expect next for Lil' Kim? Well, I want to get into, like, you know, um, producing my own artists. Mm -hmm. Also, you know, my companies. I want to start getting the companies off the ground mm -hmm. back into fashion. Mm -hmm. That is my main focus, really. Like, just really focusing on that clothing line because that's what I do at home. I remember, like, um, Floyd Mayweather, because he's one of my best friends, mm -hmm. he gave me this T-shirt, right, one time, whatever, and um, I was in the room just... I cut it up and I mm -hmm. sold it hand with my hand. And um, we were all going somewhere with him to something. I don't know. I can't remember what it was. Um, and, I, and we all were wearing our T-shirts. Mm -hmm. And I came out and all the girls was like, <gasps> I didn't get that one. Yeah. I didn't get that one. And I was like, <laughs> I, I made it. Right. It's custom. <laughs> it's custom. <laughs> and so, you know, that's something that I like to do. I mm -hmm. play around with my clothes all the time and make different ideas that people be like, oh, I didn't know they made this like this. I'm like, yeah, well, they really kind of didn't. I made it myself. And so that's something that I'm really into. You know, mm. I love to shop, so I might as well turn it into some money. Yes, ma'am. So I can shop some more. Well, I just want to say that for me, it's been my honor and my pleasure. You are one of my favorite artists. I um, love you. You have inspired me so much Thank as an artist you. to just be free with myself yes. and to take charge. Um, Thank Ladies you. Ladies and gentlemen, Brooklyn, we did it. Yes, we did it. Little Kim is in the house. Yeah. Kali, Kali, I love you. Love you too. And your music is just uh, inspiring oh, and amazing you. and you. maybe you never know. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's talk. Okay. And make some magic. Yes, yes. magic is always. <laughs> <laughs> Little Kim, y'all.